and welcome to our new lacrosse show, Bull Dodge, presented by Mad Lax California. Check them out and register for their tryouts at www.madlax.com forward slash California. I'm your host, Ryan Heydrich, alongside my good friend, Kazmier Murawski. The 2013 lacrosse season is fast approaching, and we're stuffed with topics, so let's get right to our mailbag. First question comes from Stan in Utah. The MLL draft occurred a few weeks ago. How do you think the teams did? Well, the Ohio, I, I look at a team like the Ohio Machine, and they absolutely crushed draft day. They got the best player available with Peter Baum. They got Marcus Holman, Chase Carrero, and Logan Chuss. And I think those players are going to really help that team offensively. Exactly. What, what the Ohio Machine were able to do on draft day was absolutely spectacular. You know, it's a new franchise out there. Moved over from Chicago, and they really jump started the growth of that that program with so many great players. You know, on the opposite end, I have to look at a team like the Denver Outlaws, who really struggle on draft day. Mm -hmm. Not only did they they trade away their future star in Mark Matthews, they didn't really add any talent that jumps off the page. You know, they did add kind of hometown hero Landon Carr, but does his game really translate to the MLL? I don't really think so. It's true. I look at a team like the Rochester Rattlers. And I think that they didn't. They did the exact same thing as the Outlaws. They did not have a good draft day. I mean, they got John Rannigan in the third round. That was their first pick. And besides that, they didn't really get uh, too much talent besides John Kemp. And they already have, you know, they already have uh, Galloway and Goal. So I don't know. That pick was kind of confusing to me. Yeah, actually, I have to disagree with that. You know, I think that Rochester actually did all right on draft day. I think the addition of John Kemp isn't a bad one. You know, you can never have too many goalies. John Kemp was the number one goalie coming off the board in the draft, and I think adding him to kind of compete and push John Galloway will only help as Rochester continues to grow. Right. As a team that I was impressed with, I have to look right at the Boston Cannons. You know, I think what they were able to do was pretty incredible. They're already a pretty loaded squad you know, with Paul Rabel, and the addition of Cameron Flint to their midfield will only bolster that attack. And with Will Manny on attack, you know, he can be any man one-on-one. -on -one. And it's really going to force teams to decide, kind of pick their poison. Do they, do they want to let Rabel fly around the field or do you, and let and double slide early to Will Manny? Or do they want to just guard Will Manny one-on-one -on -one and let Rabel have his way up top? And our next mailback question comes from Kevin in Palo Alto. The preseason Nike MCLA Top 25 poll came out this week. Any surprises or thoughts? You know, I'm not really surprised how the poll shaped up. And I don't think many people are. I think everyone pretty much guessed at CSU and... ASU would be on top of the poll, and you know the MCLA season's a couple weeks away from really getting going, uh, so it'll be interesting to see how kind of the poll involves and shapes up over the, the year. Definitely. I think my biggest surprise in the poll was BYU at number three. I think that the BYU team losing five of their top six scorers and, the, and their top four scorers, including Ted Farron, um, was a big, is a really big deal for BYU. I think that uh, it's going to be hard for them to replace that kind of offense. And with, um, with weak goalie play, I think that the BYU might struggle a little bit this year. I actually think BYU would be just fine. You know, they always recruit well and they always get talent coming into that school. And with Patrick Matherson still in the midfield roaming around, I think the offense will be just fine. And uh, another year for that defensive unit to kind of gel and get a, another uh, jump start on a great year, I think they'll be fine. Speaking of the poll, we want to do a weekly power rankings here on Bull Dodge. And I look at a team like uh, UC Santa Barbara at number four, and I think that um, they have their first game this weekend, and I think that they're a true championship team with C.J. Jacobs at the midfield. I think they have a real chance of winning a national championship this year. Exactly. Speaking of a team that can win a national championship, just down the coast from UCSB, we have the Chapman Panthers. You know, Dallas Harley continuing to grow that program there. He's one of the top coaches in the MCLA, and they're absolutely loaded with talent. And they play a tough schedule in the SLC, you come out of the SLC, you're ready for Greenville. So I look for a team to like them to make a deep run, and that's why we have them at number three. Definitely. So and getting right back to our mailbag, uh, next question comes in from Fallbrook, California, from Joe. He asks, who are some MCLA teams that could sneak up the polls and make a run in Greenville? Well, I have to, I have to look at a team like the University of Texas Longhorns um, with, with a new coach this year and they only graduated one player from last year's team. I think that they're poised to make a run at Greenville. Yeah, I actually agree with that. I think Texas is built for a national title appearance. You know, they play in the, L the LSA, which uh, isn't the most competitive division in the MCLA, so they definitely have a good chance to come out of there. But my team to really look out for 
is uh, actually a team from Canada, the Simon Fraser Klansman. I think that with their opponent offense, if they can just kind of figure things out on the defensive end, they should definitely be able to make the trek from, uh, from Canada to Greenville this year. Definitely. Next mailbag question comes from Brett in Atlanta. He asks, who are, who are your NCAA Division I Final Four teams? And I'm going to go ahead and take this one. I think that if the Final Four started right now, I have Duke at number one. Every year they're in title contention. Um, and this year is no different. I think that with Jordan Wolf and Christian Walsh returning on the offensive end, I think Duke's poised to make a title run. And with Dan Wigreiser and goal, they have a very good defense as well. Well, I actually have to disagree. Well, I think Duke will make the tournament I, uh, in the Final Four. I actually have to look at the Lola Greyhounds coming in at the number one seed in the tournament. You know, they'll be looking to defend their title that they won last year. And with Mike Sawyer returning for them, you can't go wrong with that attack unit. And I think they're going to put up monster points, monster and win monster games. Definitely. I look at uh, a team like Notre Dame, and I have them number two on my list with Westy Hopkins, uh, Connor Doyle, and Jim Marlette returning. They should have a very potent offense. And I look at them to make a, make a deep run into the playoffs. Exactly. Well, I'm going to go uh, with the Maryland Terrapins as my second team as the, to be the number two seed uh, for the Final Four. You know, they're absolutely loaded with talent. They have talent come in every year. And the... Uh, the prestige of the program really pushes that program over the top, and I think it carries them into the Final Four weekend. And at number three, I have uh, the UNC uh, Tar Heels. I think with the return of the, their entire attack, including Marcus Holman, who I think should be the Chorton winner this year, um, I think the UNC will have a will just poise to make a title run as well. Exactly, and so my number three seed would be the uh, University of Virginia, the Cavaliers. You know, Dom Sarge is another guy who you can't go wrong with his recruits. He constantly brings in blue chip players from all over the United States. You know, this year they'll be led by Rob Emery, who hails from San Francisco, California. And I think he has the talent to kind of push Virginia over the top and maybe put a stamp on the end of a wonderful career for him. Yeah, and um, I have at number four, I have the Denver Pioneers. Um, I think that um, with the success they've been having over the years with uh, Bill Tierney, I think that this year is no different. Um, with the return of Jeremy Noble, who had a monster sophomore year last year, and with the return of um, uh, Chase Carrera, their face-off guy, I think they're going to be they're, uh, in title contention as well. Exactly. My final team for the Final Four is the, Blue, the Duke Blue Devils. You touched on them already, so I won't go too in-depth about them. You know, they're another program that's always there around the end of the season, and I think they have a, another squad to make a run at the, uh, the NCAA championship. So moving on to our final mailbag question. It comes from Jackson in Virginia. Many great players return to action in the spring in NCAA Division I lacrosse. Who are your players to watch? And I think, I'll take this one to start off. I think that you have to look at the tour time winner from last year in Peter Baum. You know, he's only getting better, which is scary for all the teams he has yeah. to face. Um, he's another West Coast guy like Emery who kind of, his game translates really well to the NCAA. He's a guy that can just blast past his uh, defenders, and he's not afraid to shoot, and when he shoots, it normally goes in. So it's a great great option for Colgate. And I also have to look at Marcus Holman from UNC. You know, he had put up scary, scary points last year, and I think he's another guy who's going to improve this year as he continues to gel with that great attacking you know, that they have over there in Carolina. Definitely, and uh, I think Baum, I agree with you with the Baum pick. I think he's poised to have a huge... A huge senior season, but um, I really have to look like at a player like Rob Pinnell's and his return. I think I mean he had a huge junior year in 2011 with 89 points, and then he got hurt last year. So I think his return is definitely going to kickstart the Big Red to a championship run. And then touching on another UNC guy is uh, I think is Joey Sankey. He's um, he had some unbelievable goals as a freshman last year for North Carolina, um, and with Marcus Holman returning, he's only going to be the beneficiary from that. Exactly, that attack unit down at University of North Carolina should be pretty scary, and uh, I look forward to the, the action that they provide. Definitely. Well, that's all the time that we have for today. I'm Kazimir Morowski. And I'm Ryan Heydrich. Keep, keep laxing.